a decrease of 30 percent. Profit before tax was over 5 billion news in 2015 as compared to over 7 billion news in 2014, representing 22 percent decrease. Total comprehensive income after tax was 4 billion news as compared to 7 billion news in 2014, a decrease of 47 percent. The decrease was mainly due to revaluation gains in 2014 of over 2 billion news, representing 34% of 2014 profit after tax. The company, according to Chairman Cole, in addition to investing in government securities, acquired property on Lamina Sanko Street and will commence construction of a multi-story building before the end of the year. In fulfillment of its corporate social responsibility, the company donated 50 million loans to Street Child. On capacity building, the company sponsored local and international training programs for its staff. A recommended dividend of 1 million per share was endorsed by shareholders. I would like to th thank shareholders for attending this AGM and also for the confidence that they have in the directors for running the company and we look forward to their continued support. But I would also like to thank staff and management for their dedication and hard work over the period because they've been on it, I mean they've worked very hard and we we'll encourage them to continue this hard work. The services of its independent auditors, BDO, retained, and directors, Abu Bangura and Joseph B. A. Kroma, re-elected after their terms expired. Alice Onomaki is managing director of RITCOP. The general performance of the company in 2015 as compared to 2014 was not very good, I can say, but all of us know the events of 2014-2015, what I mean by that is the Ebola epidemic that made most of the companies close, some left the country, and as you can attest, it affected all institutions, all spheres of the economy. So as a result, our income dropped by 30 percent from 37 billion in 2014 to about 26 billion in 2015. She said even though business was bad in 2015, they were able to make profit. She however said with the economy picking up, we are projecting an increase in profits. The auditors video said they did their auditing following international standards and we are satisfied with the financial statements presented to them by Ritcop. Reporting for SLBC News, I'm Shaku Smile. The National Electoral Commission NEC has taken members of parliament to the Geographic Information Systems at GIS Lab to witness the draft document of the boundary delimitation process. The meeting gives parliamentarians the opportunity to have first-hand information on the stages of the boundary delimitation exercise. The GIS lab is situated at the Statistics Sierra Leone headquarters in Freetown. David Patrick Kamara now reports. Welcoming the parliamentarians, the Director of Operations, NEC, Philip Cabo, said the meeting is to introduce MPs to the draft mapping of the boundary delimitation. Mr. Cabo added that the process will prepare MPs for subsequent meetings with their constituency stakeholders. Mr. Cabo admonished the MPs that this is not the final map of the delimitation process as the law requires stakeholders to make an input in meetings that will be held at a time that will be communicated to the MPs and their constituencies. Taking the MPs through the draft mapping, Pamela Bokari, staff of the Geographic Information System, explain about the new boundary delimitation and the proposed new constituencies. Albert Masakoy is the Director of Media and External Relations, NEC. This is a demonstration of um, the Commission's openness with regards to um, its activities. 
um, we are all at Statistics Sierra Leone because this is where the GIS lab is located, the Geographic Information Systems lab. And this is where we do the physical mapping out of the constituency and world boundaries. Because we are doing boundaries delimitation and we are doing these activities, we thought it fit that members of parliament who are the beneficiaries of these maps, when they would have been transformed into constituencies, then they should come and actually do a physical verification. They go through the process. We take them along so that they can understand what these maps are and how the boundaries are being labeled so that at the end of the day, they are able to note how these locations are actually being planned or rather put into maps. Most of the MPs were eager to see maps of their constituency boundaries. Honorable Suleiman Sisse is the member of parliament for constituency 33. He said he appreciates the process so far as his constituency was among the biggest constituencies, but after the delimitation, his constituency will be reduced. For me, in constituency 33, I'm satisfied with the process. My constituency of 33 is going to be constituency 38. I had three kingdoms. Now it's only going to be concentrated on two kingdoms, Sada Tedarang and Patrick Kamranka. So I'm not crossing over to Sada Loko anymore. So to me, I'm a happy man. Okay. My constituency was too big from one end to the other. So to me, it's okay. Director Child to Child UK, Trisha Young, has expressed satisfaction over the implementation of a radio teaching project by Pekin to Pekin. She made this disclosure at a one-day visit to the three Kisi chiefdoms in Kailau district to know the impact of Pekin to Pekin radio learning project. Francis Danema sent on this report. Pekin to Pekin Talk Radio Learning Program was initiated by the Pekin to Pekin in partnership with Child to Child UK in September last year with the aim of preventing child abuse and encourage community people to send their children to school after the Ebola outbreak. This initiative came up when the Ebola outbreak brought to a halt a five-year early childhood learning project in Kisiteng, Kisitongi and Kisikama chiefdoms in the Kalaun district. National Program Manager Pekin to Pekin, Shaku Tarawali, said the Early Childhood Learning Project prepared children below the school age as they look forward to start formal schooling through older children already attending schools. The project, he went on, made young girls to fall in love with their studies. Pekin to Pekin Talk radio program, according to Shaku Tarawali, gave the opportunity to children to listen to stories tell their own stories and participate in the Pekin to Pekin radio discussions. The successes scored by the project, the Pekin to Pekin manager stressed, are early enrollment of children to school, educate children on basic hygiene practices, prevent teenage pregnancy, importance of child education, among others. Beneficiaries from the three Kisi chiefdoms in the Kalaun district shared with the child to child director, Tricia Young, how the project has helped them. Begin the way that way that they're not in the going to school. They're going to school now. Okay. Don't have way about Boku thing. Mm -hmm. They listen about radio. You hear it? But they don't know do uh, bad things. It is actually an interactive program, and in fact, it has created an opportunity for us to meet as children to discuss and tackle issues affecting us. I must be realistic here by saying the ongoing radio listening, ongoing radio educational listening project is creating gradual improvement in our lives. Local authorities in the three chiefdom thanked the Pekin to Pekin and Child to Child for the radio learning program, pointing out that the project has built confidence on their children. 
Director of Child to Child UK, Trisha Young, said the knowledge gain was that the project has helped to sensitize the community about the importance of supporting their children's education and protection. The impression that I gained, and obviously this needs to be verified by the final evaluation that we're just about to undertake, but the impression I gained from the three communities that we visited was that the radio program had really helped to encourage communities to send their children, and especially their girls, back to school after Ebola. Bags, books, pens and radios were distributed to beneficiaries of the project. Radios were given to pupils called young journalists so that they would be encouraged to always listen to radio. Paramount chief by Koblo Queen II of Marampa Chieftain has described the launching of a computer laboratory to promote girl child education in his chiefdom as a step in the right direction. He made a statement at the launching of the HLP One and Books for Peace Computer Lab at Our Lady of Guadalupe Secondary School, Lusar, Marampa Chieftain, Putloka District. Joseph Stanley now reports. Launching the project, Paramount Chief by Kublu Queen II said the establishment of the Internet hotspots will make educational and learning materials available to students in the chiefdom. He thanked the donor for the timely intervention as pupils are in dire need of such facilities and encouraged beneficiaries to make good use of the opportunity to access learning materials that will help build their capacity in their educational pursuit. The director of Rachel P1 and Book for Peace Computer Project, Joseph Tawali, explained about the importance of the project. I mean, you can learn anything you want to in that particular topic. So it is very easy. You don't need to learn something. So that is like the benefit of this. And one thing about this Rachel again, I'm going to go back. So like, look, like teachers can upload their own local contents. They can make their own notes and upload them to the ratio and make them available to the students. He maintained that the project was designed to provide educational resources for young adult girls and children to improve on their educational standards, especially in modern technology. Mr. Tawali disclosed that the country needs equitable universal education to resolve gender divides and illiteracy as well as improve the status of vulnerable adult girls and children. The Girl Child Network leader Amina Takaruma expressed appreciation to the director of the project for the bold step in taking such a project to the rural community to promote girl child education in the country. She added that it is a way of motivating pupils of Guadalupe Secondary School to access learning materials by computer through Rachel Sava and encourage pupils and parents to ensure that they maintain the computer as it is a community property. The principal of the Our Lady of Guadalupe Secondary School, Sister Elisa Padla, said she has been looking forward for such a facility that will help the students to face the challenges of the world. This is the time that you have the school at heart. Today, we are not only witnessing the success of our students, the fruit of their effort. During the academic year, we are concluding today. But it is a very special day because we will be witnesses of a great project for which both Maria Ines and Guadalupe Secondary School have been chosen as pilot schools to show to the rest how much technology can improve our educational output. The chairman of the occasion, Robinson C.C., outlined the importance of the use of the computer and urged pupils to make good use of the facilities at the center to enhance quality education. An organization working for children, Nutsuki Kia Sierra Leone, has launched a project that focuses on school feeding. Child rights activists believe that the provision of food for primary school pupils will serve as a motivation to increase pupils' attendance and retention in school. The lunch was done at Aberdeen Primary School, where school children were fed. Nasi Udinkumu, now reports. 
These children here eating, each with a plate of meal served hot, are the first set of beneficiaries of the new school feeding initiative that Child Health Care Foundation has launched. They are being served with locally produced and prepared blend of highly nutritious food, including cereals, vegetables, fish, and other locally produced cooking ingredients. But what the organization aims to achieve with the launch of this new project is what the chief executive officer, John Duru, a renowned child rights activist, is telling the audience in his brief statement. Nukia is here to stay, to establish a sustainable community and school feeding program that falls squarely within the ambit of the UN declaration and a list three of the Millennium Development Goals, namely to eradicate extreme poverty and hunger, to achieve universal primary education, and to promote gender equality and also empower women in trade. According to the Chief Executive Officer, Nuti Care Serum Program is established as an umbrella microprogram on the Child Health Care and Development Foundation, registered with Line Ministries. More than a billion people on a wider perspective suffer from chronic malnutrition and hunger. In spite of official pledges to half the world's hungry, the trend runs in the opposite direction. He said a report states that one third of the country's children are malnourished and that one third of the population of children die of malnutrition. He stressed that nutrition is an in indispensable component of health care services for children in Sierra Leone. The Child Health Care and Development Foundation is soliciting government support to achieve the objective of taking the responsibility of feeding children in schools across the country. Here is the partnership director of NutriCare, Jamal Jaffa. However, reaching a country is a challenge of NutriCare as the management cites lack of adequate logistics. The need transportation and other resources to fast track their advances into the interior of the country. The organization is starting with the Aberdeen Community Municipal Primary School, the venue where the project was launched over the weekend. The day's event was graced by Child Health Care Foundation partners, including the director, National School Feeding Program, Sylvester Mew, the managing director, Fran Mix, among others, who all commended the Nutrika Initiative and pledged their collaboration to its expansion and sustenance. The University of Sierra Leone, under the University and Research Development Service Center, has held a one-day validation workshop on the report on examination malpractice. The report is a follow-up on a two-day stakeholders consultative forum on examination malpractice held in February. Umubakao was at the forum held at the Mary Kingsley Auditorium, Frabi College, and now reports. Examination malpractice has been a serious concern to many people not only in Sierra Leone but other countries in Africa. For many people, the rate at which examination malpractice is increasing has accounted for poor performance of some graduates in public offices. Chairman of the program, Professor Alison Sisse, who is also the Deputy Vice Chancellor of IMAP, referred to examination malpractice as a serious global problem that has infiltrated the educational sector. He says the quality of development of a nation can be tied to the quality of education of its citizens. We have a crisis. If we don't act now, the future will be. We'll continue to hire people from overseas to come help us. And you know the economic impact of that. We need to start now. We cannot go back and make a brand new start. But we can start now and make, make a brand new end. A representative of the Ministry of Education, Horatio Nelson Williams, said, Sierra Leone's education sector requires women of good educational character to portray the good image of the country. Mr. Nelson Williams also spoke about political interference to pursue culprits and lack of political will to tackle the issue of examination malpractice. 
present in the report, head of the committee, Dr. Isaac Palmer, called on other stakeholders to declare a state of emergency on examination malpractice because it has become a huge crisis. According to the report, there are seven factors responsible for examination malpractice, including incompetent staff, laziness of students, lack of effective examination monitoring. Recommendations at the forum include installation of CCTV cameras, naming and shaming, and prosecution. At the end of the engagement, students gave their views on examination malpractice. Uh, my name is Mohamed Mango. Of course, the examination has got to be something that has become very much alarming in the universities today. Uh, several, whenever exams are going on, you see tears of examination malpractice, various types of them. Some normalists are coming, coming in uh, what they locally refer to as Gaga. And this issue has, especially in all of the departments in the Asperity College, experienced something that is most, very much alarming. When actually um, examination um, officers are the Deputy Minister of Information and Communications, Cornelius DeVoe, has officially launched the Girls Education Challenge Project Handbook at a ceremony held at Kona Lodge Signal Hill in Freetown. The booklet provides an insight into the Girls Education Challenge program in Sierra Leone and shared anecdotes and stories of transformation. The launching ceremony targeted donors, implementing partners, and pupils from different regions across the country. Let's now join Hawa Mosili. The booklet provides an insight into the Girls Education Challenge program in Sierra Leone. The Deputy Minister of Information and Communication, Cornelius Devo, the 7th Joint Coordinating Committee meeting of the Comprehensive District Community Development Project has been held at the Conference Hall of the Local Government Ministry. The meeting provides an opportunity for JICA and government to review the progress of the implementation of the project. Abu Sam Sisi again. The meeting jointly organized by the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development in conjunction with the Japanese International Cooperation Agency, JICA, attracted participants from the local government ministry, chairman of local council, senior representative of JICA from Ghana, and senior officials at the decentralization secretariat. The senior representative of JICA from Ghana expressed appreciation for the successful implementation of the community development project in the country. Mr. Nohito called on every Sierra Leonean to participate in the project despite the invasion of Ebola and the rebel war, which is said immensely affected the activities of their Japanese expert in the country. Delivering the keynote address, the Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Maya Kaikai, said that the joint coordinating meeting provides an overall review of the project activities and financial position. The Minister of Local Government, Maya Kaikai, informed the meeting that the response so far received from the development partners is encouraging. He called for an effective collaboration of beneficiaries and the development partners. Mr. Kakai also highlighted huge investment into the project and its comprehensive review by government. Community development, helping the community, building the capacity of uh, people, uh, building the capacity of councils, this other phase uh, is going to be implemented from uh, say January next year, but the planning stage will start now. That's why we have to design the, the joint communique uh, agreement between JICA and my ministry, because my ministry is solely responsible for monitoring and evaluation oversight role to ensure that uh, the funds provided are used in the manner expected of the Japanese people because the funds are the Japanese taxpayers' money, so it behoves on us as a country. Since 2009, JACA has been a major player in the implementation of the community development project in Potloko and Cambia District. In 2016 to 2018, 
The project will focus on the northern region and target beneficiaries with extension to focal partners like Potloko, Cambia, Bombali, and Tonkolili district councils. The signing and presentation of the project in Potloko and Cambia district council form a high point of the seventh joint coordinating meeting of the local government ministry and JICA. For SLBC News, Abdul Sam Sisi reporting. Professors Without Borders based in the United Kingdom, an international educational organization, is in, the, is in the country to provide summer schooling for university students and SSS pupils. Lawyer Magix Walker is a co-founder professor Without Borders. He has been explaining to Ibrahim Samura on the importance of the summer classes. In the past, I don't know if the university's act has changed, but I know that there are always classes for the average scholars. We are very close. We have a number of scholars who are taking summer schooling because we are dealing with the same issue. We don't apologize for that hitch. We cannot bring you that report due to some technical problems. Sierra Leone Legal Aid Board has engaged, has engaged key stakeholders in Waterloo with a view of educating them on their rights to maintain legal justice. Abu Samsi say reports. Addressing a well attended meeting of community members drawn from Waterloo, Tomo, York, Mountain and Koya Rural District at the Med Porsche Entertainment Complex, the Attorney General and Minister of Justice Joseph Fijiel Kamara said the creation of the Legal Aid Board in the country is to ensure a fair dispensation of justice to every Sierra Leonean, regardless of one's status in the society. He added that the government of President Kroma does not only care for the rights and justice of women, but also children. He recounted the rules played since the establishment of the Legal Aid Board that include the appointment of more judges across the country and the release of over 500 prisoners at the correctional services who were incarcerated for various offenses. The executive director of the Legal Aid Board, Fatmata Claire Carlton Hassel, said that the board is concerned about the detention of a high number of school children from the Waterloo Well Axis for the offenses of robbery. She appealed to parents to give their children proper parental care. Honorable Asan Bishikanu, a veteran politician, commended the Legal Aid Board for their current services to the nation. On behalf of the Women Caucus, Councillor Fatmata Kamara called on women in their rural district to support the positive strides of Sierra Leone Legal Aid Board. For SLBC News, Abdul Samsusa reporting. <laughs> Professors Without Borders, based in the United Kingdom, an international educational organization, is in the country to provide summer schooling for university students and SSS pupils. Lawyer Magix Walker is a co-founder professor Without Borders. He has been explaining to Ibrahim Samura on the importance of the summer classes. Well, actually... We have our organization has um, three parts. The first is a summer school which we do all over the world. So this year it's a free town, full commercial school and also in the Gambia. We have lecturers all over the place. And secondly, we, we do corporate training and then we do educational training. So for the first inaugural program we decided to have the principal school because um, in this instance I am myself Australian. I came to this lovely school a um, long time ago. I studied here, but now I live in the UK. I'm a barrister. I practice law, but also lecture law. So um, I brought my colleagues together so we can start this initiative. And um, it's good. So that's how the principles came on. I wanted my school to benefit from this, but I also wanted other schools all over the country. So we have a PhD, we have um, and we also, we also have Gulf High School. So what to. areas will you be focusing for the next coming well, uh, in the first instance, what we want to do, we don't, we have not come to teach what they already know, right? Um, I know Principal School has an excellence in sciences, and other schools do well in, in the arts, etc. What we've come to deliver for the next two weeks, we want to make these young minds global citizens. We want them to be a global, to understand that the world is changing, 
who have a global view of everything. So even the people who do science, we're doing some of the African politics for them, for them to understand African politics, economics, and geography, right? We do, we're teaching them how the UN works and how international organizations work. And also we're teaching them, I'll be teaching law and ethics. Ethics is quite important these days in international business, right? How to make sure you do the right thing for your country and for your business. So that's what we'll be doing for the next two weeks. So, okay, now it's the summer school day for two weeks. Two weeks, yes. Okay. So, but what really okay. Professor the thought board I want to achieve from this um, summer school or this initiative? Well, what we want to achieve, we want to, we want to reverse the brain drain. That's the idea, we want to reverse the brain drain. I grew up in Freetown and I was fortunate enough to go overseas to study. I got my degrees overseas and I, and I lived overseas and practiced overseas. I think I'm a lost to Australia because I do a lot of work in the UK. So I believe that if we can start something of the sort, we can have our young people stay here, get good education here, bring education to them instead of going overseas, and they can start to build this country to the heights it used to be and for even to greater heights. That's the idea. Okay, now let's talk about um, the area of assessment. Yes. At the end, do you have to assess this? Oh yes, we do. We do give them assessments. We do each, each lecture that you see, we'll be assessing them based on what they've been taught. Right? And at the end, we'll have a closing ceremony where they'll be given prizes and they'll be given certificates of attendance. But we expect the certificates to be shown to to um, empo employers in the country to see that they're excellent in what they're doing and be able to employ them to do good jobs that people from overseas have come to do. We want these guys to form a new Sierra Leone, to form a country where um, they know what ethics are, they know how to behave within the country, how to seek each other's burden and how to internationally explore the horizons and be global citizens, not just for Sierra Leone. Our lecturers are global. We live in the UK, but they come from all over the world. So we have um, Emily right there, who is British, living in England. We have Glenn, who is from the um, Philippines, but he lives in England. We have Marisa from Switzerland, who lives in England. We have Josh from South Africa, who lives in England. And we have um, Joya, who lives in Canada. Right, so we have everybody is coming together with a different approach to education to form a basic, a strong center where the students can be able to explore and, and learn and to become global citizens. So, us. That was Lawyer Magic Swoka, co founder, Professor Without Borders. Christ Embassy Tivo Club Initiative has organized career day seminar for pupils of secondary schools in Freetown to help them in their career selection before reaching tertiary level. The seminar brought together over 500 pupils from over 15 secondary schools within the municipality at the Miata Conference Hall in Freetown. Let's now join Nasiruddin Kuruma. And in the fields of banking, entrepreneurship, law and mass communications, we have facilitators brought in to inspire the school children to take up their right determination for a successful career. The speakers including media guru Dr. David Tambayo, accountant and business administrator Harold McCarthy, legal luminary Sonkita Conte, successful entrepreneurs and career developers like Pakai Kamara and Leslie Gordon Brown encourage the peoples to choose careers that will create the impact that will reflect their personal success and national developments. They emphasized that right determination makes it easier for one's success in life. Therefore, the right morals, courage, and perseverance is a prerequisite for a successful career. When we are educated, it's for two things. One, that you are able to serve society when you are educated. Two, in the course of serving society, you are able to put bread on the table for your family. As I believe some of you here already know what you want to be in life. Maybe some of you have already had um, a taste of this work experience that I'm, I've been talking about. And you've already decided you want to be a doctor or you want to be an economist. Or maybe you want to be the next president in Syria. Your success in life is determined by what you are willing to ignore. Decisions, 
makes work. Pupils from the various schools asked the facilitators questions on their presentations to guide them in making their own choices in life. To end news are the main points again. Resident Ernest Baikuruma has left Sweet Town for Morocco for a high level deliberation with His Majesty the King Mohammed VI. The National Electoral Commission NEC has briefed members of Parliament on the draft document of the boundary delimitation process. The Reliance Insurance Trust Corporation, RITCO, recorded profit before tax of over 5 billion lirons in 2015, representing 22% decrease compared to 2014. And the director Child to Child UK, Trisha Young, has expressed satisfaction over the implementation of a radio teaching project by Pekin to Pekin. That's all in this edition of New Year broadcast live on the SLBC. On behalf of our news editor, Sheku Sumaila, I am Mbalu Bagur. For more information about our programs, do send us an email to www.contactus.slbc.sl. Thanks for your attention. Good night. Sierra Leone is always fondly remembered as the image of a lion. Whether one looks at the sprawling hills or the spreading rivers, Sierra Leone stretches as a pride of lions. Many Sierra Leoneans don't remember when they last saw a lion. However, that did not stop Pedro de Sintra, a young Portuguese discoverer, from naming this great country. Sierra Leone. From 1462, when Sierra Leone was named by the Sintra to the years of slavery and the years of freedom, Sierra Leone has come a long way to becoming a diversified and unified country. Coastal Sierra Leone has always attracted attention from neighbors near and far away. The country's river Rukel running into the great Atlantic Ocean has always opened its doors to every human civilization for as long as it has existed. Known as the Athens of West Africa, Sierra Leone has built a name for itself upon a solid educational foundation with colonial experimental institutions such as the Grammar School, Annie Walsh Memorial School, and Forabi College, institutions which led the All Africa Way for quality education for people of African origin. Sierra Leone, a country of several pictures of courageous battles, of slavery and of colonialism, of independence and of self rule, of civil war and of activism, of blood diamonds and of peace diamonds. Sierra Leone has emerged as a country, a concept, and a conscience. Sierra Leone, the beautiful diamond of Africa. Hello and welcome to Issues in the News. Coming up, the talk of the University of Sterling has terminated the services of history lecturer at Fabi College. Professor Ibrahim Abdullah was accused of insubordination, acts of indiscipline, and neg negative attitude to work. He's one of the less than 10 professors at the Fabi College. The university recently changed his status from a tenured lecturer to that of a social worker. Professor Ibrahim Abdullah has described the decision of the university of Sterling to relieve him of his duty as a violation of his human rights 
and in diversity act of 2005. In a press conference yesterday held at Blatchett office, it attracted other scholars and civil society activists who all added their voices to call her university courts to revisit what they described as unfair dismissal. But one such civil society organization is the Native Consulting and Research Center and the studios is the executive director Edmond Abu. Edmond, welcome to issue the news. Well, thank you Firstly, much. what do you make of this? Uh, how do you receive this? That uh, you know, Professor Abdullah was, you know, actually, you know, uh, expelled from the university. So, you know. Well, we've been following this pro this um, um, exchange for a while now. So, um, we observed that um, we looked at the, the the issues, the the points raised from the university. We followed these issues for a long time now, and um, I, I think it was.